With barely any time left and only one more chance to win or lose, NFL players pull off crazy plays for some of the greatest game winners in history. Steps into it, pass is caught, Diggs! Touchdown! Unbelievable! And first, this game was tied when a catch led to something unbelievable. Throws it back to back. But at number 19, the Dolphins won a game with three points. Third down and 10, Dalton in his own end zone, and down he goes into the safety. Ball game, it is. Dolphins win. Dude really got speared in the end zone for a walk-off safety, aka two free points for the Dolphins. But even something that rare ain't as crazy as number 18, where Matt Stafford's craziest game winner literally tricked an entire team. Because with time ticking down, Matt pulled off the first of his big plays. So that had everyone expecting the Lions to just spike the ball and stop the clock. But even though Stafford himself was signaling for a spike, he tricked everyone and did this. Reaches over. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Nobody saw that coming. But number 17 was even crazier because it completely ruined an opponent's season. Both teams right here needed this win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Both teams need a win in order to keep pace with the division leaders. But without much time left, and the Jaguars lining up for a chance to take the lead, their kicker attempted arguably the worst kick I've ever seen. But things were about to get even crazier just a few plays later. Fires, Mike Smith Walker, knocked down. Oh, he caught it! Oh, unbelievable! Mike Thomas, touchdown Jags! Wait a minute. With no time left, the Texans player swatted the ball down like he was supposed to, but he hit the ball right into his opponent's hands for a game-losing touchdown. Now that was unbelievable, but not as unbelievable as number 16, where one legend's game winner helped him set an NFL record. Mike Vick was about to make history, all because he desperately wanted to beat one of the league's best teams, the Vikings. The problem was that throughout the game, he was throwing like he had a noodle for an arm. Like, what the hell was that? Anyways, so that's why he stopped throwing like a quarterback and started rushing like a running back. Run after run, he was killing his opponents so badly that he eventually had 127 rushing yards. Now with the game tied in overtime, Vic was just 23 yards away from breaking a record for the most rushing yards in a game by a quarterback ever and just a score away from winning when this happened. While running through damn near the whole team, even making dudes smash each other, that crazy run won his team the game and set his record with 173 rushing yards. But in the end, that play only won a regular season game. At number 15, a player's game winner sent his team to the Super Bowl. Everything came down to this kicker for the biggest moment of his life. So a 57-yard field goal attempt. And if Zerline hits this field goal, the Rams are going to the Super Bowl. That snap. The kick is good. Rams win it. And on to Super Bowl 53, they go. Yeah. From 57 yards away, he won that with the longest game-winning kick in NFL playoff history. But the game winner at number 14 almost made someone have a heart attack. Just pay attention to the ball here, man. Favre lays it up for Freeman, and it's incomplete. It, or did he, can he make the catch at the 15? Yeah. What are they going to rule it? He caught it. Touchdown. <laughs> he did what? Through the defender's arms, hitting the player's helmet, and somehow magically bouncing into Antonio Freeman's hands? That catch was already crazy enough, so it made one announcer damn near have a heart attack. He did what? And just like that, the game was over. But at number 13, a player getting cocky led to him winning a game for the wrong team. When Seahawks quarterback Matt Hasselbeck led a late comeback to tie the game, he was feeling himself and got a little too cocky, especially during the overtime coin toss. I'd like to call heads. Heads is called. <laughs> Look at him, he's laughing. Heads! Seattle has won the toss. So. Oh, we're gonna score. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around, oh boy. And at the time, telling the world their plans was cool and all, until. Takes the snap, short drop, quick throw, left side. Yes! Yes! The right side. Going down the right side. Down the end zone. It is out. Uh, dude 
really did what he said he was gonna do and scored all right. For the wrong team. I bet that man never talks shit again. But number 12's game winner was so crazy, a player now only blacked out. He said God helped him score. <sighs> Who else but Tate, man? Not that one, Golden Tate. And he was wild right here. Stafford throws and it's complete to Golden Tate, who has a first down and then dives to the end zone for a Lions touchdown. And that game winner was so crazy that Tate admitted he didn't even make that play. God did. Now, no matter if it was him or God, whoever made that game winner, number 11's game winner was so much more iconic that it got its own nickname. Because with only enough time for one play and being over 70 yards away, to win the game, the Dolphins needed more than a touchdown. They needed a miracle. Tannehill will throw it. And this will end it after the shovel. Or will it? Wait, oh, look out! Gronkowski didn't have the angle! No way. That was not only the first multiple lateral walk-off touchdown ever, it won the clutchest play of the year, and it even got its own nickname, the Miracle in Miami. But all right, now that we're getting into the top 10 greatest game winners in NFL history, let's take things to a whole new level. Like a game-winning play that was so crazy, it got turned into an NFT. Or a play that was so brutal, it got someone fined thousands of dollars. But first, how about a game winner that won a team a championship? Adam Vinatieri will try to win it with a 47-yard field goal, 48-yard field goal attempt. Snap, ball down, kick up, kick is on the way, and it is good! It's good! Adam Vinatieri moves a 48-yard field goal, and the Patriots are Super Bowl champions! Yup, right down the middle, game over. And that not only cemented Adam Vinatieri as one of the greatest kickers in history, it won them the Super Bowl. But as clutch as that was, number 9's game winning play completed the craziest comeback in NFL history. This play never would have happened if the Patriots didn't start the biggest game of the year getting their ass whooped. The Falcons came out and instantly dominated until they eventually ran up the score 28 to 3. At this point, their probability of winning the game was calculated at 99.7%. That's nearly impossible to lose. But all right, let's be real. If Tom Brady's in the game, there's always a chance. Right then and there, he led the Patriots all the way back until they eventually tied the game and sent things into overtime. So eventually, everything came down to this. Now that's how you win a game. But I'm just being real, I expected Brady to pull it off. At number 8, a game winner was so unexpected, it had fans destroying their squad's jerseys. I hate the Browns. I hate the Browns so goddamn much. It's a 51-yard kick, and it's Travis Coons for the win. And it's blocked. And it's picked up by Will Hill. Will Hill runs down the sideline. Hill's going to get a block. Will Hill is going to win the game on a blocked field goal. Okay, man, to go from possibly winning the game on a kick to getting blocked like Matumbo and giving up a touchdown to lose, to be honest, I'd kind of be lying if I didn't see that coming. That's something the Browns would do, but fans were still heartbroken. Oh, oh my God! Are you kidding me? Now, all right. So far, we've only seen a safety, touchdowns, and field goals winning teams the game. At number 7, a team won without even scoring. I know that sounds impossible, but with the Rams up by a touchdown, that's exactly what they needed to stop their opponents from scoring. So they had to get a stop right here, right now. So it all comes down to this. Six seconds to play. All right, guys. Last play of the game. McNair will work out of the shotgun. McNair drops, throws right side for Rice. He dives for the end zone. Reaches to the goal line. No, he falls at the one. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. No, no. Yes, yes. We won. Aw, uh, poor guy. He only needed a few more inches. And I've heard that before. Would you get out of here? But at number six, there's game winners from 60 times as far. Can the receivers get far enough down the field? 
in trouble. It's going to get there. He turned 32 yesterday. Does he have a vintage moment in him? In the end zone, it is caught for the win. Out of the pocket. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Murray heaves it downfield. It is oh, it's caught. It is caught. And hope for an interference call. Let him throw underneath. Elway firing to Smith. And Two seconds. Here's a blitz. Ouch. Long high ball. Lots of guys going for it. Fight in the end zone. It's caught by the Browns. The Cleveland Browns have won the game. Orton pumps again to the sideline. Bat it up. Oh, God. Stokely down the sideline. Can they catch him? Stokely. Wow. Touchdown. The game's final play is a Wilson lock to the end zone, which is... Fought for by Tate with Jennings simultaneous. Who has it? Who do they give it to? Touchdown! Ball rolls. That's the throw deep it does to the end zone for Big Lewis. Touchdown! Touchdown! All right, I already know after game-winning throws like those, some parlays were ruined. And I'm still salty about some of those. But those plays only happen in the regular season. At number 5, a legend's biggest mistake in the playoffs led to the dumbest game winner ever. Extra man on the blitz, Rodgers gets a hand to the face, the ball is out, the Arizona Cardinals win it. A fumble to a kicked interception that ended with a game winner? That's the only time I've ever heard of someone pulling off a kick 6. But I never thought I'd hear of a kick 66 either. Until I saw this next play at number 4, where a player set an NFL record that'll never be broken. Uh, and of course it was going to be Justin Tucker. Even legends know that he's the best kicker of all time. He might be the greatest ball striker to ever kick a ball. But even though Tucker's known to always hit ridiculously long field goals, with a game on the line, nobody in history had ever even attempted to make one from as far as he was about to. On its way. It bounces off the crossbar, and it's good! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my... Did that just happen, Greg? Oh my god, man. Tucker won the game from a record 66 yards away. And if you ask me, that's one of the craziest plays you'll ever see. But at number three, is a game winner that was so legendary, it got turned into an NFT. Oh, that's sweet right there. During all the metaverse hype, the NFL started turning some of the league's craziest plays into moments that fans could buy and collect. But none of their NFTs became as legendary as the play right here. Good high kick. Peterson backpedals, takes it at the two. Trying to get outside. Turns it upfield. Patrick Peterson gets by the punter. Peterson may go all the way. He will. Patrick Peterson wins it for the Cardinals. 99 yards. But that was the longest game-winning punt return ever, so of course the NFL turned this into an NFT. And hold up a sec, I think I'm gonna buy this real quick. But speaking of wasting money, at number two, a player's historic game winner got him fined thousands of dollars. Now, it definitely shouldn't have, but after the Seahawks did this... Wilson, toward the end zone! Jermaine Curse's touchdown sent him and his squad to the Super Bowl, so his excitement had him throw the ball into the crowd. Now, the NFL is strict about celebrating like that, because they don't want fans fighting over a souvenir. So Jermaine got hit with unsportsmanlike conduct, which resulted in a fine of over $5,000 just because he celebrated his game-winning play. Luckily, it didn't only lose someone money, though because it turned out that the fan who caught the ball eventually had sports collectors asking to buy it for over $20,000. 20 bands, just for another man's brown ball. But as crazy as that entire story was, it only got the Seahawks to the Super Bowl, where they eventually lost to a play that even had grown men tearing up. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. Because that play's so known, I figured we can't just end the video like that. Nah, in my book, 
the real number one and greatest game winner ever is a play that had 0% chance of happening. At least that's what I found according to my calculations and what the players talked about. Santonio San Holmes was the man with the plan, and honestly, he must have been studying one of the most legendary receivers film the night before, because Julio Jones was a man who made a living making plays like these. Extra men on the rush. Ryan steps through it, throws on the run, and Jones with a catch. To go in the corner. And on second and goal, they're going to throw the fade, and there's Jones, and good luck trying to stop that. Touchdown. Cannonell surveying the scene, looking end zone, caught! Julio Jones! Touchdown! Toe tapping, or getting his toes in bounds like this to make catches, was something unlike anything anybody ever saw. And ironically, making a catch like those is what Santonio San and the Steelers plan to win a championship. They'd spent time in practice trying to perfect making it happen, but one of them admitted it was never even completed a single time. We called that particular play that we ran to finish the game in practice over 100 times. And the first time, I dropped the pass in the back of the end zone. And then again, it was tipped. And again, it was intercepted. And again, it was overthrown. Again, I was out of bounds. Again, it was underthrown. The play didn't work. So for them to whip that play out with only one opportunity to win or lose the biggest game of the year, that took balls. And well... We need this play, man. Go, man. This is win the championship for us right here, man. Washington outside left. Roethlisberger has time. Throws to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown by Holmes. The greatest catch in that most important game happened with 34 seconds to go. For import, for difficulty, that was insane. And he's like levitating maybe a half an inch to an inch off of the ground as he makes the catch and just taps him in and falls out of bounds. How would you know that your toe is just inside? You watch it in slow motion, it looks difficult. Imagine doing that with all the speed, all the defense, all the elements, the noise, everything. He made it happen, and for that, I think it's the best play we've ever seen in a Super Bowl. And just like that, the play, the game, and their opponent's season was over with the greatest game winner I'd ever seen. But the most disrespectful things you'll ever see are in this video. And trust me, even that sure is nothing compared to an NFL team who burned their own player alive, or the player literally took a poop on all of his opponent's logos. All of that's in here, so click it, click it, click it.